would you walk with the Lord in the light of His Word and have peace and contentment alway, you must do His sweet will to be free from all ill on the altar you all, your all, you must lay. Is your all on the altar by Alicia A. Hoffman? This morning, I was struggling with contentment. And, um, you know, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say this, but um, I would rather just study God's Word, listen to worship music, and, um, you know, listen to teachings on different topics um, that's pertaining to learning more about the Lord, you know, spiritual gifts and prophecy and just the Word of God, to know more of God. You know, we're supposed to study and show ourselves approved. And um, honestly, I am content in doing those things and bringing the word, you know, of encouragement to anyone who will listen, that's my heart. And I find satisfaction, contentment in doing um, these things and sharing the grace of God with the world. And I believe that I am called to do that. And he created me and saved me and delivered me from so much to share and testify and to be a witness of who He is and of His grace, forgiveness, mercy, restoration, and resurrection power. And, um, but, <laughs> so this morning, you know, I've been putting off like going through my boys' um, closet and drawers, my own, um, you know, drawers and things like that, pulling out things that are either too small for them, um, just, you know, cleaning out and um, being on top of, um, you know, my house, my, my household duty as a mom and as a wife. And so I was doing that finally. And um, it's like every time I turn around, there was like a pile of clothing. Um, not a lot, a couple piles of clothing in the corner of my six-year-old room or in the bathroom. I was just like, oh my goodness, you know. And you do this like every day. You, you go around, you teach them to pick up after themselves and put it in the washer put it here whatever you tell them every day but for whatever reasons they don't do it every day and you know and just like walking around the house and doing those uh, domestic things and um, I can tell that um, this this spirit of um, discontentment and wanting to grumble was like beginning to bubble up within me uh, and then I had to change my mind um, basically that's what repent is um, and take those thoughts captive and I began to praise the Lord for having children for having these precious you know boys to to have to call my own although they belong to the Lord um, but for a season he's entrusted them you know to me and um, to nurture, to raise, to love, and to teach them and admonish them in the ways of the Lord and teach them about Him. But um, just, you know, all the things, if you're a parent, you know what you, what you go through just to keep the house in order and all the things that you have to tell them 10 times a day that they still don't do. And I was just like discontented for a moment. And, but I took those thought captives and I began to praise the Lord and then I began to see you know there while I was folding you know two loads of laundries and doing more washing dishes and all of those things picking up toys um, I was like thank you Lord I began to see the beauty you know of their little socks or underwear <laughs> undershirt their uh, bathing suit or swim trunks um, pajamas all the beauty you know that I guess only a mama could understand of um, her children and I began to ask the Lord to search my heart to renew a new spirit within me to give me a heart that is you know full of the joy of the Lord full of thanksgiving full of gratitude for every blessings every blessing that he's given me whether it's children home clothing 
a husband who takes good care of us and who's faithful and committed to us, you know. And then once you start on this um, roller coaster of pointing out every blessing and giving God praise and thanksgiving, all of a sudden your spirit is renewed and your heart begin to have praise and thanksgiving and joy. And all of a sudden, you know, you, you realize that you're content again. But um, another thing I wanted to share with you is that sometimes I struggle with like, um, you know, this, this life. Um, I know without a shadow of a doubt there's been so many endless confirmation. I know the Lord, the Lord has called me to Himself, for Himself, to serve Him only. But, you know, I do have my um, real estate license. And so sometimes I began to waver and wonder, you know, if I should be, you know, pursuing um, the things of the world, you know, to, I don't know, um, because obviously the things that we do um, for our Lord, the way we serve Him by testifying um, about Him and being His witness and sharing His word, you know, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world, that's like utterly useless to the world so in the eyes of the world and those who are not born again even our closest family members um you know they may see it as we're wasting time and my problem is sometimes i begin to wonder and question if i'm wasting time and not being a good steward you know being out there hustling bustling um making money and serve the lord at the same time and i went through this battle many times in my life before but in this day and age I'm confident that God does not want me to do that but my heart sometimes deceives me and it tries to trick me and tells me that you know you should be out there um, trying to make money and this and that but um, I know that's a lie from the devil um, I'm confident that God has me where he has me in this season to wait upon him to fellowship with him, to learn of him, grow in his grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to share him faithfully. Um, I love how Mother Teresa puts it. Um, she says, God did not call me to be successful. He called me to be faithful. And ever, ever since I, I read that in the last three months, I have owned that for myself. It's like this knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has called me to be faithful to Him for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of harvesting of souls, souls for the kingdom and nothing else. And um, But like I said, you know, our heart deceives us and, and the world is, is always calling for our attention. Sometimes our own insecurity and fear um, sets in and it wants to pull us away from the things that God has for us and discontentment sets in. So this is why I'm going to um, share contentment. Godly contentment is great gain in the eyes of the Lord and in our lives. And I just want to encourage myself because I need it. And um, maybe, you know, you who are watching might also need this word today as well. Amen. Contentment. Lord, it's so easy for me to look around at what my friends and family have and be envious. Please help me to find contentment with what I have and to be thankful for everything you have given me. Amen. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bone. Proverbs 17.22 a, a merry heart is a happy heart. It's like good medicine. Amen. Happy people live happier lives, longer lives, and more meaningful lives. Amen. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hebrews 13.5. If you think about that, that promise, that rich and wonderful promise, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That's God Almighty, the King of all kings, the creator of the universe, heaven and earth. And, and he's our maker. 
you know, he said that I will never leave you nor forsake you. We have God Almighty. So what more is there that we could possibly want that's more than him, better than him, that's, that's you know, any that has any more value than him? When we have God, we have everything. And when I say God, I mean Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, because I know that people call many things God these days. But there's only one God, one Savior, and His name is Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen? He's the only Savior, the only name given by the Father that man must be saved, Jesus Christ. So I just wanted to um, clarify that. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart had a continual feast. Proverbs fifteen fifteen. I love this verse because when you have a happy heart, when you when you have the Holy Spirit inside your heart, first of all, there's songs, songs of praise, songs of gratitude, thanksgiving, that is deep within that bubbles up like living water because he is living water amen and so when you have the holy ghost you have joy you have peace even if you're going through a dry season a wilderness um struggles and challenges like right now i'm going through in the natural realm it's not easy it's not fun because my husband has been away for nine and a half weeks now or 11 weeks i'm sorry 11 weeks he'll be gone you know for the next couple months and then he'll come visit for a couple weeks then he'll be gone again for at least six months so we're um because of his deployment we're separated um you know by thousands of miles and many continents away for the next year plus but um that causes me sometimes um mental and emotional anguish because i want to be with him and he wants to be with me so it's a very tough time for him because he has a very challenging job over there in japan and it's also a tough season for me and for um our son um ethan our youngest son um because he wants his daddy and um my husband wants his son and his wife so it could get very lonely and if I do not have contentment and joy and peace and praise, I can go spiraling downward really fast into anxiety, into frustration, depression, um, into self-pity. And I could drive myself to the point of where I'm running to uh, very harmful, unhealthy uh, choices and sources to bring me comfort. And you know what I mean by that. They're, the world runs to many different things to bring them comfort. But um, we, as children of the living God, we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. He is the river of life. He is the, the river of joy, of peace. And He is um, praise. He is um, songs. He is psalms. He is life he is the air that we breathe and he is the breath of heaven so therefore when we have him um, even though we do sometime um, are tempted to coward in to our current circumstances and just want to pull the cover over our heads but we can't stay there long we have to um, arise in his spirit you know and in the blessings, in the um, authority, and the position that we have as a child of the living God who promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. I will come to you. I will comfort you. You are mine and I am yours. I love you. I am with you always till the end of time. Amen. Just a couple more verses. A sound heart is the life of the flesh but envy the rottenness of the bones that's proverbs fourteen thirty. we must have a sound heart because out of the hearts comes the issues of life when our heart is not sound it's not at peace we're ugly towards others you know towards our own children towards everybody that's around us because out of the hearts it comes um, well, the hearts, for one, if it's not born again, 
um, is the root of all evil. It's got all kinds of wickedness, deceit, pride, anger, vengeance, bitterness, um, covetousness, you know, lust. So that's all in the heart apart from the Spirit of God. So when we have the Holy Ghost, we have a sound heart when we submit to Him and walk in His Word and abide in Him and um, abide in the shelter of the Most High, in the secret place of the Most High, then our heart will be at peace, it will be sound, and life will be well with us and everyone else around us. Amen. <laughs> but godliness with contentment is great gain. See, contentment is godliness, but it's only one of the virtues of godliness that our God wants us to have, that our Father desires out of us. He does not bless those who complain and murmur because it's an insult to Him. It is an insult against His faithfulness, against His character, against His power, against His love, His... his um. All the great plans that he has for his children, when we're complaining and murmuring, we are being ungrateful and we're insulting, you know, the, the Lord of all lords, the King of all kings who only has good plans and he owns it all. And it is, um, he desires to give us good and perfect gifts, but he will not bless those who murmur against him, who complains, who will not come to his court with thanksgiving and praise. Amen. That's what his word says. Come to my court with thanksgiving and praise. Let us bow down and praise the Lord our God, for he is our maker. Amen. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. This is what I take comfort in. Because I do envy sinners sometimes. I do envy them because they make so much money and they can go to all kinds of expensive vacation. Although my heart does not thirst or hunger for any of the things that they have. But there's something within me that does envy them. Because, I mean, here they they live like a, an absolute life of um without god blaspheming him and disrespecting him but yet you know they're doing good in the natural they just don't realize through the eyes of god through his word um the reality is that although they claim to be rich they're actually poor wretched and naked and that's in revelation so we who are born again we know what's up so, but you still have to tame this heart. Amen. I have to tame my heart. I don't let myself dwell on what they're doing, what they're not doing. I've got to keep my eyes on the Lord in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Because this is where my peace comes from. My joy, my satisfaction, my contentment, my hope is all in the Lord all day long i want to be able to please him i want to i want to bring honor and glory and fame to his name you know not just um, within the community but all around the world i want people to know the name of my god my savior my redeemer my healer my father the king of heaven and earth that loves me that loves them so very very much so um i try to live every day in the fear of the lord for surely there is an end. There's an end. And the end is coming. And thine expectation shall not be cut off. Amen. Proverbs 23, 17 through 18. Would you walk with the Lord in the light of his word and have peace and contentment always? You must do his sweet will to be free from all ill on the altar your all you must lay. Is your all on the altar? Is your all on the altar? Is our life, is the purpose of our lives to bring Him honor and glory? Amen? That's why He made us. That's why He created us and that's why He saved us. 
because he loves us and he wants us to live for him because he died for us. Amen. Thank you for watching. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his grace and peace be upon you. I love you all. Bye-bye.